Hey, hey, what's up, garden and friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. This is all very last minute. It's gonna keep it casual. I wasn't even going to be releasing a video today because there's construction going on in my garage, which is my growth space. Can't really do anything in there. And what I had planned on doing today was planting up this umbrella planter. When I came outside this morning, all of these daffodils here, they, I think maybe two of them had opened up. So I was like, well, that would be a boring video. Just a pot with a bunch of green blades in it and don't have enough time to let it pass and let things bloom. Don't have enough time to allow to pass to let them bloom for the, you get what I'm saying. And lo and behold, five o'clock, now that all the nice lighting's gone, the tete -tet daffodils just burst open. Perfect timing, sort of. Would have been better this morning, but I'll take it. If you have been around for a while, you may remember when I made this pot, I think it was like, I didn't make this pot. I cut a very large hole in the bottom, silicone to PVC pipe in there so that the umbrella that goes in the middle of this table can fit right through it. So there's no other drainage in here. I could add that and I probably will at some point just not right now because you need to have the hose running when you're using those diamond bits and the tap water is so freaking cold. I don't feel like messing with it. There'll be an umbrella over this and I just won't water it very heavily. It's fine. Just have to be careful. So there's no, if you don't know by now, what are we? Probably a minute and a half, a little bit less than that into the video. There's no point to this video. I'm just planting some nice spring things in a container and just talk a little bit. At time of year, things are finally starting to look, I should grab a tray, something to dump all the excess dirt out into. I have back here a mixture of just assorted pansies, the tete tet daffodils, and some pink hyacinth bulbs. I mean, it's not all going to fit in there. You know I could try. I'll jam a lot of things into a container, but with this, I was about to, I was about to say I'm going to keep it light. That, that's not happening. No, I want this filled to the brim, and I probably put too much soil in that container as it is. May have to lighten it up. The nice thing about deaths is that they can be planted up fairly high, like if you were doing this in an indoor container, you could easily have the soil level right around the middle of that bulb, even lower. But these have already been sprouted. You see where the white is on there? So that's the line that needs to be covered up. If a little bit of it's sticking out, it's not a huge deal. The main thing with working with bulbs that are pre-sprouted, that are already going, and especially ones that already have flowers on them, is just to take it very easy on those roots. Otherwise, they're pretty sturdy, at least the daffs are. Daffodils, narcissists, they tend to be very forgiving, but just the one, just the one that looks so good in there. So excited about having one plant in the container that I completely lost my train of thought. What was I saying? Oh yeah, daffodils. Super forgiving, easy to work with. They're not going to throw much of a fit as long as they aren't messed with too much while they're in bloom. Probably should have mentioned this when I was talking about the container that these are in. There's an acorn in here. I haven't added any kind of slow release or anything of the sorts either, which usually I like to do when I'm putting together a planter. It's so cold right now that a slow release isn't likely to do much for the plants anyway, so it doesn't matter. It's to be outside, hear the birds chirping. A little bit chilly, but that's all right. I'll take it. Beggars can't be choosers. Look, it already looks so good. Good, looks so good. I have three more of the teta tets. I don't... I mean, maybe I was going to say I don't see myself fitting them in there just because I also have the hyacinths, which are fairly large hyacinths. The hyacinths tend to take up a good amount of space, so I don't, I don't know. I want to keep adding to this, but I need to leave room for these three hyacinths. Hopefully I'll be able to squeeze a few pansies in there too. Because of the no drainage in the bottom of the container, I have the daffs intentionally placed, placed I placed the daffodils intentionally a little bit higher than I probably should. See, I'm not going to be able to fill the soil wide and back up above where that white is. It's cool out. It's not really hot, so I'm not really worried about the plants being shocked by that change. And then plants that can take more moisture, like the hyacinth bulbs, are getting way down there into the bottom. Still, the thing, okay, yeah, they can take more moisture, sure. It's not sorry about the moisture, it's more about an anaerobic environment right? So there's not going to be oxygen down in there. It's just going to be sitting water. With that in mind, I also use a soil blend. It's an all-purpose blend, but it's coconut based. And coconut, at least, at least here where I live, that coconut soil dries out so incredibly quickly. It bricks up and starts to crack. Like I was saying before, the moisture isn't something I'm too concerned about because there's going to be an umbrella above this. And Worst case scenario, I can, they're bulbs. I can lift them back out and pop a hole in the bottom of this if I need to. Last year, this was full of succulents from late spring all the way into fall. And I never had any issues with there being too much moisture in here. Possible when planting these pre-sprouted bulbs, all the stuff I've been pulling off from around there. Go ahead and leave that. I'm just pulling it off because I want to make sure that this is all being backfilled with the blend that I know is going to dry more quickly. Because as I mentioned, there's no drainage in the bottom. So I have to make sure that it's, 
that these are surrounded by something that isn't going to be mucky. We have some kind of torrential spring downpour, which we will at some point. Don't want it holding on to too much moisture down there around the bulbs. And it looks like I'm able to get the soil line right about even to where it was prior to me pulling all that stuff off. It's gonna be backfilled with something that's not going to hold on to quite as much moisture. Got some good colors in here. I know it's just yellow and pink so far, but I'm thinking that the tete -tet daffodils should finish themselves up. That was try and rephrase that finish themselves off probably isn't the way to explain that they're going to be done flowering about the same time as the hyacinths start to open up or maybe a little bit afterwards i'll talk more about the plants that are in here when i finish getting plants plopped in here we've got lots of pansies to choose from down here i'm going to stick with lighter colors because it sits under an umbrella where it's already fairly dark not going to use any yellows because I already, you see all the yellow that's out of focus back there don't need any more lighter colors will just stand out a lot better and there's a big white back here on the patio that with the white on the flowers that'll light up at nighttime. Always like having some white flowers kind of scattered around the seating area. There's something luminous about having those white flowers around where the lights are. Jeez, these pansies look freaking huge next to those tiny little daffodil flowers. Look at that. To the point where I'm almost debating maybe I shouldn't put the pansies in here. This looks nice on its own. I can fill in the cracks with some moss if I want to. Drop a few more in here and see what I think, but I really am thinking this might just be best to keep it simple. Well, maybe leave the pansies out. Violas, that could, maybe that would have been a better idea. The tiny little flowers. It's not, no, I'm not going to put more in here. Here's the thing. The pansies are taking away from the tete tets and the tete tets are my favorite part of the planters. So I'm not going to leave those in there. I'll be at a nursery, I'm sure, the next few days and I can always grab some violas. That would fit in there much more nicely. There have been plenty of occasions where I would have just gone ahead and done it and said, comment down below, should I leave them or keep them? I'm not going to do that. I already know that I don't like it. They're not staying. I love pansies, but that was not it. That wasn't going to look right. The soil that I'm filling this back in with has been pre-moistened since, as I keep saying, there's no drainage in the bottom of this container. That's also why I'm lightly tapping it down. We don't always tamp down the soil. A container like this that's extremely temporary, I don't really worry about it, but if it's something that's going, like a house plant that's going to be in the same pot for a long time, I usually like to just water the soil in and let it disperse itself and just let the bubbles burp out and keep adding more if necessary. This is, I would imagine, in probably a month to a month and a half, maybe, well, maybe two months. It won't be that long until I'm pulling this apart and putting stuff in there for the summer and the fall. I am short one hyacinth, so I have a hyacinth planted in between each one of those clumps of the tete -tet daffodils. I, I bought three, need four, not a big deal. Whatever, I can buy some more next time I'm at the store, which won't be long. Since this is going to be together for probably six to eight weeks, I do want to make sure to get in a, an annual that is going to continue blooming. The tete -a they usually bloom. They have a succession of blooms. They put out tons and tons, lots of little bitty flower buds. I'll bring in closer so we can have a look. They are always covered in flowers once they start going. That's why I love these tiny little daffs. Never mind the <laughs> plastics back there. It's a beautiful shot. Just take it as it is. Single flowered blooms, but they just keep pushing up. Each bulb usually puts up about, I'd say four to six stalks of growth. And each one of those will put out multiple flowers, usually two to three. They're small, but you get so much out of those bulbs. And they're really sturdy too. Anytime I plant the tete-a-tetes, which by the way, I, my pronunciation, I, I have no idea if I'm saying it right. That's my talked about them. I think the consensus in the comment section was tete-a-tete, but whatever, it's, it's will have been spelled out at some point on the screen. You know what I'm talking about. That heavy flowering, that's part of the appeal. And the rest of the appeal is that they're just sturdy. Anytime I work with these daffodils, they end up just being tossed into the garden, just randomly anywhere that they land with the old soil during the late spring when I'm doing more warm season containers. And then the next year, they just pop up. I have some tete -tets popping up in a berm on the other side of the patio that I don't, I don't know how they got there, but they're there and they're cute and I'm fine with it. Overall, just a nice one to have around. I do want to make sure to get those violas in there, maybe some lobularia, something that's going to continually bloom though, even though these will bloom for a while. I won't be planting this up with summer annuals until probably May, which is 
about eight weeks away. So I'm going to want something in here that's going to keep on flowering. The hyacinths, you know, once they're done, they're done. I'll cut the flowers off of them and just let them chill out after they brown out. Same thing with the tete-a-tetes. I'm just going to let them do their thing. They have a nice grassy texture to them. So I still think that'll look really nice and springy to have that good grassy texture in there with just some violas, something in front of it. If I didn't feel like doing that, then like I'm pretty sure I mentioned, I'd just take some sheet moss and tuck it into these crevices that are in here or some kind of vase filler, tumbled glass, gravel, something to cover up the surface of the soil just so that it looks nicer since it's sitting here on the table. I want it to look nice. I don't necessarily want to be looking at the soil. It doesn't bother me, but you, it would be a nice finishing touch that I can't add yet because I'd, well, I'd need to add the other plants first. So maybe in this weekend's vlog, we get around to doing that. This is also when I would normally put the umbrella back on the table and there'd be a nice glamour shot of it spinning around on the lazy. So I guess I can still do that. Ooh, see, isn't that nice? Doesn't that look good? You get to spin it around, get all the different angles. It'll look much better if there's some kind of filler in there, won't it? And the umbrella will be up there. Not gonna bother with that right now. That is supposed to rain a lot the next couple of days. So I'm gonna take this inside I'm not going to bother putting the umbrella back in here when I want to add some more points to it. So I can just wait a few days. No big deal. You can follow up in this weekend's vlog. Comment down below. Say hi. Hope everybody's doing well. Having a great day and a great life. And everything's just going absolutely beautifully for you. love sitting out here hearing those birds. It's been such a beautiful... It's not even spring. It's been a beautiful late winter. But it's getting dark. May as well end this now. I will finish this up in this weekend's vlog. And of course, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. I know there's an airplane. We're just gonna, it doesn't matter. We're just gonna say goodbye. Bye, bye. But nope, forgot one important point that I never got to. See, this was a very last minute video. I didn't have my notes, didn't outline anything. So things aren't gonna be in order. It's fine. I mentioned the slow release. That's not something I'm worried about with bulbs that are already in bloom. We're getting everything they need right now from the bulb itself. When they're done flowering, that's when I'll be concerned about making sure that there's fertilizer being added into here. Some slow release, some espoma bulb tone, something to help build a nice, strong, healthy bulb to survive the winter and bring back really healthy plants next year. That was it. That was the point. See you later.